where did 7 million workers go? The U.S. economy is booming, but mysteriously, the workers are disappearing. In a moment, I'll explain why, how, where, and what to say to your clients. This is The Rare Advisor, proud to be a part of the Advisor Advancement Network and home of a business model supercharged by recurring and repeatable events. Your host is Mike Walters, CEO of USA Financial. He is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member of SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Hey, welcome to The Rare Advisor. Today, I'm going to spend some time talking about where did the millions of lost workers go? The reason I'm going to chat about this is because the previous conversation on the Rare Advisor was about pandemic inflation, how to explain it to your clients, how we got to where we are today. And we, there was such a calling on that that I'm actually going to now have a similar conversation, but talk to you about where did all these millions of workers go? Why is it that there's such a shortage out there right now. Now, there was a great picture from the Atlantic uh, where they took the, the iconic uh, picture. I, I don't know the name of this, I apologize, but that iconic, iconic picture of the steel workers sitting on the beam from, I believe it's the 1920s, uh, overlooking, maybe, maybe a little later than that. But anyway, you've, you've seen it before where they're all sitting on the beam having lunch together and they're just sitting, you know, it feels like miles above New York City. It's a great view. And what they did is they, they blocked out like, you know, 40% of them. Uh, so that you just see like these shadows of some of those workers actually missing. So uh, what I would recommend for you to do, by the way, is, is go to get two different articles. So jot this down. The first one for a left leaning bias. And by the way, I'm going to give you both left and right leaning bias here because this is a unique environment. Different viewpoints are arguing and debating about what's going on with the workers. However, there is a fair amount of overlap. So I think it's important, depending again on where you're coming from, what news bias your customers are listening to, what voting bias or political bias they may have, I'm gonna give you both the left-leaning bias on this and the right-leaning bias on this. And because it's a little different, I'm actually gonna read some excerpts for you from two different articles coming from at this from different angles. The first one, left-leaning bias is going to be from the Atlantic. Uh, it's actually from the picture I was just referring to. That's the picture on the headline of that article. Uh, it's from the Atlantic on October 23rd, 2021, and it's titled, Where Did 7 Million Workers Go? Now, the second article you should take a look at is from the Wall Street Journal. This one's going to be a little more right-leaning biased. It's from October 8th, 2021. Again, Wall Street Journal, and it's titled very similarly, it's titled, Where Did All the Workers Go? So again, the Atlantic title, Where Did 7 Million Workers Go? The Wall Street Journal title, Where Did All the Workers Go? So let me start here real quickly with the Atlantic. So this is an actual excerpt. I am, in fact, never done this before in the history of the Rare Advisor. I'm going to actually read some of this excerpt for you. So when you look closely, the direct effects of COVID-19 do not explain very much. By the way, this is the Atlantic left leaning. Most pandemic deaths have been among elderly people, not Americans of prime working age and COVID fears have lessened over the past few months. Even so, the number of Americans under 65 looking for work is still shrinking. What's most puzzling to me, this is the author, what's most public, pu excuse me, plus, Puzzling. How is that? What's most puzzling to me is that the labor shortage is everywhere, Jason Furman, the chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors under President Barack Obama, told me. It's everywhere. It's in every industry. Every small business person I talk to has a story, and this is coinciding with large increases in nominal wages. So what are people doing? How are they getting by? The most complete explanation is that the massive fiscal policy response to the pandemic reduced the urgency of looking for work. The United States has spent trillions of dollars to help families get through the excuse me, through the economic deep freeze, via stimulus checks, expanded unemployment benefits, and the moratorium on student loan interest payments. National eviction bans have taken pressure off renters. Then there's the record high surge in savings among families. 
who haven't gone on vacation or splurged on experiences in more than a year. Add to that the fact that job openings have hit record highs, which means people now, excuse me, people know that if they wait a month or three, there will still be jobs aplenty to apply to. Seeing this whole picture, more Americans clearly feel like they can take a more leisurely approach to going back to work. Surveys bear this out. A monthly questionnaire by the hiring company Indeed, that's the online firm Indeed, found that the most common reasons given for not looking for work right now are having an employed spouse, number one, or having a financial cushion, number two, followed by care responsibilities, number three, and then finally COVID fears. So these might seem like distinct reasons, but we can knit them all together into one meta explanation. People can afford to prioritize family care and avoid COVID-19, at least for now, because of savings and working partners. So what's more, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what's more certain is that Americans are quitting their jobs at a record at record numbers, especially in the leisure and hospitality sector. The great resignation seems to be accelerating alongside a remote work revolution in the knowledge economy. So now again, let's pause. That's from The Atlantic, title of the article, Where Did 7 Million Workers Go? That's a left-leaning approach or biased towards the situation. Now let's take a look at the right-leaning approach, similarly, but coming from The Wall Street Journal, called Where Did All the Workers Go? So what's causing the worker shortage? One possible culprit is government and employer vaccine mandates that set ultimatums for workers. President Biden's vaccine order first applied to nursing homes, which lost jobs in the month. Many states and school districts have also imposed mandates, and state and local education employment fell by 161,000. The White House claims its vaccine mandates will boost job growth, but not if unvaccinated workers quit their jobs. Democrats have also made uh, quitting an easier economic option. Pandemic enhanced unemployment benefits ended in early September, but that was only one week before Labor's, <coughs> excuse me, Labor's monthly jobless survey ended. Uh, next month might provide better data on that score, but there are still many other federal financial payments that don't require work, including a $300 monthly allowance per child, food stamps, and rental assistance. Many people have saved some of their transfer payments, and now Democrats are promising more. Inflation may also be tilting the scale to leisure instead of work. Average hourly earnings are rising fast, up to 4.6% from a year ago and 7.4% uh, at an annualized rate, but wage growth after inflation has been declining for many lower income Americans who spend more of their incomes on food and energy. The lack of workers has clearly become a drag on the economy, slowing production and contributing to supply side strains. So ships are backed up at ports in part because there aren't workers to unload and transport them to where they need to go. Home builders say labor and material shortages are delaying projects and increasing prices. The economy is still growing, but not nearly as much as it should be as the country emerges from the pandemic's depths. The Atlanta Federal Reserve this week downgraded its GDP estimate for the third quarter to 1.3% from 6.1% in late July. So the White House and Fed have deployed the Keynesian policy mix of government spending and easy monetary policy to boost demand. Meanwhile, they've squeezed the supply side with incentives not to work, restrictive mandates, and the promise of more regulation and higher taxes. The result is 5% inflation and supply chain disruptions that CEOs say will stretch well into 2022 and possibly even beyond. So two quick summations of how people are seeing this void in workers and what the rationale is. Again, go check out those articles. Where did 7 million workers go in the Atlantic, October 23rd, 2021? And where did all the workers go in the Wall Street Journal, October 8th, 2021? I hope you find that helpful because you do need to address this from both angles. There's a lot going on. And, and I would contend, although it's not discussed in these articles, I would contend 
that there is different perception based upon economic uh, status. There is different perception based upon age. So that is influencing this significantly as well. Hey, we'll talk again soon. Thanks. This information is for licensed financial professionals only and is not intended for use in soliciting sales from the public. The views expressed represent the opinions of the presenter or their featured guest, not necessarily those of USA Financial or its affiliated subsidiaries. Industry references are generic and not intended to represent actions or beliefs of any individual or entity. Content is only presented to illustrate general principles, beliefs, or ideas and should not be construed as legal or regulatory advice. Trademark and copyright protected. USA Financial and Affiliates.